I'm Mr. Ramsey, saving Western civilization one student at a time. In this episode, we're going to discuss totalitarian regimes such as the Soviet Union. We'll talk about two other ones in our next lecture, uh, Fascist Italy and Nazi Germany, and how these countries gave rise to World War II, especially Nazi Germany. But Soviet Union also had a major part to play. So we're going to talk about what happened after World War I, and then how the Soviet Union was formed, and Joseph, how Joseph Stalin took power over the apparatus of the Communist Party. So if we remember, World War I is over, um, it, and they, uh, the countries, the allied countries, force a, a punitive peace on Germany, and after the war, um, there's disillusionment. What, and one of the disillusionments that happened was, uh, what type of society should we have? And some people were saying democracies, but it seemed a lot of people, especially in the 1920s, thought the democracy model was not working. And so they turned to other models. And one of those models is the totalitarian communist state set up in the Soviet Union. If you remember, uh, Vladimir Lenin had overthrown the provisional government of the Russian people in 1917, November 1917. And he had set up a totalitarian state, a communist state, a one-party state, okay? And he promised the people peace, land, and bread. And so the Russian people were promised these things, and that's why they were willing to go with, uh, well, some of the Russian people were willing to go with the totalitarian state that Lenin set up in 1918. But Others didn't, so you had a major civil war in Russia from 1918 to 1921, and the Reds, or the Bolsheviks, or the Communists, whatever you want to call them, won that war. And that was, a lot had to do with Leon Trotsky and his Red Army. He formed the Red Army. So, once Lenin's in power, he sets up a totalitarian regime where you cannot disagree with the government. They use the threat of force. They monitor all publications. They monitor all print light, uh, print. They monitor your daily life, okay? And they use modern technology to do this. And it's and they control everything: your social life, your economic life, your political life, your religious life, because there is no religion. And they promise this is going to be a utopian place, a perfect place, society, okay? And the reason why Lenin did this is because from 1918 to 1921, he, he starts this thing called war communism, where all the major indus industries in Russia, which he now calls it the Soviet Union, were under government control. Okay, And this war communism was a total failure. And so by 1921, people were starving. So he decides to introduce a new policy called the NEP, the New Economic Policy, where he's going to introduce a little bit of capitalism for the small farmer or the fall, small businessman, small, your small businessman. Most of your big factories are controlled by the government, but the NEP, NEP will allow a little capitalism to get things going again, okay? And once he allows this new economic policy, wages start to go up, food supplies goes up, and you have small manufacturing farms that are earning a little bit of money, okay? And then in 1922, he formally changes the name of Russia to the Union of Soviet Social Republics, where he has a dominating totalitarian state. And also in that same year, he has a stroke, okay? And when he has a stroke, um, there's going to be two people that are going to try to wrestle power and control the communist power. One is Leon Trotsky, the other one, Joseph Stalin. And the state 
The communist state of Russia is supposed to be a dictatorship of the proletariat, where the workers control, would actually the workers don't control it. It's actually a the the Communist Party controls it. Okay? Where this dictator of the proletariat was supposed to be a classless society where in education was free, health care was free, housing was free, and it was going to be a utopian society when in actuality it was nothing but the education was indoctrination, you're lucky if you got health care, um, and housing was usually crowded with one person in one, or well, a whole bunch of people crowded in one room. Okay? So anyway, Lenin suffers a stroke in 1922, and he dies in 1924. And the party is going to be wrestled between Leon Trotsky, who built the Red Army, and Joseph Stalin, who was the general secretary in 1922. But Joseph Stalin had played his cards, if you want to say this way, right, where he's put his own men in different departments as general secretary, okay, while uh, Leon Trotsky was helping Lenin. And once... Once that happens, Joseph Stalin's going to use his power to overthrow uh, Leon Trotsky. Okay, They're, they had a disagreement also about how to set up this socialistic communist state in Russia. Uh, Lenin, Lenin, Leon Trotsky argued that you should have permanent revolution. You should always be in revolution until every country of the world was a communist state. Okay, and Joseph Stalin argued that. You should have communism in one country, all right? It's it's a semantics game, if you want to know the truth, because uh, Stalin was actually for revolution in in every state too. He's trying to overthrow it all. He just wants to make the Soviet Union strong, and then spread revolution that way. Anyway, be that as it may, okay? Uh, Joseph Stalin outmaneuvers Trotsky, and um, once he does that. He actually, in 1925, forces Trotsky to resign from the Ministry of War. Then he banishes him to Siberia. And then in 1929, he banishes Trotsky from the Soviet Union entirely. And then, while Trotsky was out of the country, he would write pamphlets against Stalin. And so in 1940, while Trotsky was in Mexico City, he um, was uh, murdered with an ice pick in the back of his neck by Stalin's henchmen known as the NKVD. So the NKVD, the secret police, had Trotsky murder. Okay? This is not the only time that Stalin does these things, okay? He does two major purges before World War One I'm sorry, before World War Two. Okay? Millions of the Communist Party were expelled from the party, arrested, then put in gulags, which are work camps, which they'd work until they died. Okay? There was the sabotage trials of 1928 to 1933 that accused people of sabotaging the Soviet Union because the production rate was not working like his, on his five-year plans, like he said, and we'll talk about the five-year plans in a second, and then the treason trials of 1934 to 1938, okay, where two-thirds of the party leadership were accused of treason, they were arrested, they were put in gulags, and uh, or they were exiled, or they were shot. And that wasn't just the party leadership half of the army command was also um, put on trial. Okay, And if you know anything about Alexander Solzhenitsyn, Alexander Solzhenitsyn in his book A Day in the Life of Ivan Diasovich um, writes all about this. He writes another book called The Gulag Archipelago which talks about how, how the work camps were awful. They were more than awful. They were concentration camps. And people have up to saying that 25 to 40 million people probably died under Stalin. Anyway, and that's not, that's not a number to sneeze at. So you have basically millions of people are being arrested, okay, including the old Bolsheviks who tried to overthrow and did overthrow the Tsar, and then they were later purged, okay? In 1936, they were removed from leadership, and then... Um, and the NKVD, which is the, or the GPU, or the KGB, or Cheka, whatever you want to call them, arrested several million, a million of them being shot, two million of them died in the gulags. And that's just in, from 1937 to 1938. 
So that's the type of society that Stalin has. Okay. In addition to that, he also is going to um, try to industrialize, force industrialization on the Soviet Union. Okay. He wants to transform Russia into an industrial power. And so he comes up with this idea called the five-year plans. He has a five-year plan from 1928 to 1932. Then he has a second year five plan from 1932 to 1936. And a third year five plan from 1936 to 1940. Okay, And he's going to have all agriculture production, industrial production under government control. Okay, And he's going to focus on heavy industry to catch up the rest of the world, uh, catch up Russia to the rest of the world. Okay, and so he's not going to really be producing consumer goods, and in the process on agricultural, he's going to do this thing called collectivization, where the government owns the land and the peasants farm the land. Okay, and but really the government owns the land, and you have to make made a make meet a quota, and you give all your uh, farming crops to the government, and some. People fought back. The Kulaks in particular were prosperous peasants under the NEP. Stalin shuts them down. They fight back, and he kills thousands, sent them to the Gulag. And as a matter of fact, in 1932, you have the terror famine in the Ukraine called the Holodomor, I'm sorry, the Holodomor, which um, kills over five to seven million people because um, Stalin starves them to death. Okay? Because of his five-year plan, he start. I mean, they get millions starve. They have little or no wages, and he uses terror to control the whole country, both in his party and also the people within his party. And a matter of fact, the the Western press was even saying how great the Soviet-style system of society was doing. And um, this man named Walter Durante would write stories for the New York Times who received the Nobel Peace Prize for his stories, and they are all lies. He said that there was no famine going on. There was, this, there was a couple people dying, maybe, but there, there, it was over-exaggerated when in actuality five to seven million people died. In my next lecture, we'll talk about fascism. Italian fascism, and if we have time, we'll talk about Nazi Germany. Till then. <laughs>